Greetings all. I'm Coma. You're watching Coma Astrophotography. Tonight we're going to do the North American Nebula. It's up right now, so as soon as it gets dark, we'll go ahead and get started. So I've got everything set up, ready to go. So tonight, North American Nebula. Now this might look a little bit weird to you. That uh, little old bitty telescope setting them up on top of that big mount. And uh, I agree it is a little bit weird. It was not, this mount was not really meant to carry that little small telescope, but it does carry it and it does work. Uh, the problem is, and I, I had a little problem, the telescope, the way it fits on here, I had to turn it sideways because uh, you can see right here to get to the focuser I, I had to turn the scope over so it sat in there sideways because if I put it bottom side down it just just didn't fit the other thing you'll see up here uh, I had to put a weight out here on the end of the telescope because it, it just wasn't heavy enough uh, for me to balance it here in the declination so to get the deck balance I had to put this weight on here and if you're wondering where I got this weight from well that's a trailer hitch from my truck I just took the trailer hitch out of my truck right there and then I took another one of those small counterweights uh, which I ordered this is actually the counterweight from the Sky Guider Pro and I stuck it on the end of my uh, trailer hitch there now to make sure that it don't move around if it moves while the telescope is uh, working then, then it's going to mess up the guiding and probably give you long stars and stuff so I had to stick it down real good uh, with tape now I tried to put it all on my dew heater uh, so I didn't get sticky stuff on my telescope and uh, maybe that'll work and maybe it won't but uh, that's how I had to rig this little bitty scope up to get it to fit on my big mount now before, I used this scope on my Sky Guider Pro, and if you remember my video uh, where I showed how to point this uh, scope by hand and how to take pictures using the Sky Guider Pro, this was a scope I was using. I could have uh, put it on my Sky Guider Pro tonight, but I want to get 10 minute exposures tonight on the North American Nebula. And using the Sky Guider Pro, I just can't get 10 minutes, uh, so that's why I decided to put it up on top of my CEM 60. So tonight I'm using my William Optic Z61 wide angle uh, scope riding on top of the Ioptron CEM 60. So there it is, kind of a weird setup, but it's gonna work, I think. Okay, while we wait to get started here on uh, night two of the North American Nebula, I'm going to show you a little bit about what we're going to do to get framed up exactly the same way tonight that we were last night. Right here, I have called up a, one of the pictures from the North America Nebula that I took last night. Uh, now I'm going to go to the plate solving software, PointCraft. Uh, last night, I made a custom object here in PointCraft for the North American Nebula where I put the RA and declination for the very center of the image, um, this image here. Uh, so I'm gonna, gonna put that into the plate solving software. We're gonna solve this image. Image solved. Okay. Image is solved. Deep sky clock event. clock event. This is the uh, photograph that we took last night on night one. The image is solved. Now what I'm going to do is send it to Stellarium. So I'm going to click show. Let's send it to Stellarium. Uh, now we're going to go take a peek in Stellarium. So this is how we were framed up on the North American Nebula last night. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and go shift print screen. I'm going to get a, a screen, take a picture 
of this framing right here. And now I'm going to copy that, uh, going to copy that picture. All right, so now we have the North America Nebula uh, framed up uh, just like we had it last night, a picture. Now you might think, why do I, why do I want a picture? Well, here's why. Cooling finished. Uh, uh, later on, when we go over to the North American Nebula, I don't want to have to take a two or three minute exposure enough to see the nebulosity to define this picture here before I match the rotation of the camera to get the framing right. So by having that picture to look at, that reference picture, now I can uh, go to the North American Nebula tonight and just do a five second exposures. Do a five second exposure, plate solve it, send it to Stellarium, and then compare the framing from Stellarium in real time to the picture that we had from last night. And then I can rotate the camera as need, needed based on that to get it framed up exactly right. Now it's going to be easy to find the center because uh, we already have the coordinates for the center. Uh, what we'll need to do possibly is just rotate the camera to achieve this same framing so that uh, we don't have to cut out or crop some of the picture that doesn't uh, match up. So anyhow, that, we got a little bit of head start going on that. So as soon as the North Star comes out and I can see it and get the polar alignment done, uh, we'll start our night two imaging on the North American Nebula. Go to plus plus finished. Okay, so it thinks it's where it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some guiding going. Looks like a nice star right there. We'll go ahead and use it. Guiding is going. Okay, so we're going to take a shot to see where... Uh, Exposure started. See where we're sitting at right now. Exposure finished. Five second exposure. Plate solved that. Image solved. Now we'll do, let's go ahead and sync. Now we'll do show. Send it to Stellarium. Now let's go take a look in Stellarium. Uh, there's where we are right now. Now let's go look at this uh, other picture that we took to see where we want to be. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's kind of going across the image. Crap. I like this orientation better, but it's not what we had. Let's go ahead and rotate the camera and get it back like it was. All right, so here's how I rotate the camera. This little set screw right here, this is my camera rotator. All I have to do is loosen this little set screw right here and then rotate right here. I can rotate the whole image train. You see the whole thing moving? About 15 degrees. I'm going to guess about right there. Tighten it back up so it doesn't move anymore. And now let's go see if we got the orientation correct. All right, let's go ahead and take another shot. Exposure started. Exposure finished. All right, we'll plate solve this one. Image solved. Send this one to Stellarium. And now we'll take a look and see if we got the framing right this time. I'd say it's cl a lot closer than it was. Let's compare it to the uh, image and see how close we are. It's pretty doggone close. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna twist it just a frog's hair, frog's hair to the left, maybe one or two degrees, and that, and I think it's gonna be uh, right, right where we need it. All right, I got I gotta tell you, I think I think we're there. I'm going to go ahead and recenter on our other coordinates and then go, go ahead and get the imaging plan started. So that's how we achieve uh, the uh, same framing that we had last night. Let's go ahead and uh, get the auto guiding going. All right, it's guided. Uh, I don't know what caused this. I'm gonna, I gotta go check for a cable snag. That uh, looks suspicious to me right there. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Still not re really good. I did have a cable that was catching. 
So that cable is cleared off. It was causing those big old spikes. Right now, it's kind of cloudy up there. You can see how the guide camera is kind of milky here. There, there are some clouds, some high thin clouds uh, over the North American Nebula now. So we're just going to hang out until those clouds clear out, and then we'll get the uh, imaging plan going. I suspect the guiding will get a lot better uh, once those clouds are gone too. All right, we've got some images in to look at. Uh, here's the first HA that came in. You can see a little bit of definition here. It's not as good as the other night, not as good as I was hoping. And to be frank, uh, these are marginal, marginal images because there's a high, high cloud layer up there. We're shooting through thin clouds and a lot of haze. The only reason I'm even trying it is it's uh, been almost a month since I was able to get out. Uh, I just wanted to get something done. So I don't know if I'll be able to use these, uh, but it's not going to be for lack of trying. Anyhow, here's a first HA image that came in tonight. Take a look at an O3 image. Not a lot there, but you look up here, you can see some definition of the nebulosity. And the other O3 looks just about the same. We're waiting on the first uh, S2 image to come in. You see we've got about 25 seconds uh, to get the first S2 image. And I'm kind of curious to see what that one's going to look like. All right, I fast forwarded time. Uh, our S2 image coming in here in about uh, just a couple seconds. Exposure finished. Dithering started. Eh, not much to see. Not much to see. I don't know. I'll know after I stack it uh, whether I'm going to have enough signal to uh, put the uh, S2 frames in there or if I'm going to end up just making this uh, HOO image. Uh, anyhow, we'll see what the night brings. I hope the clouds go away and it clears on up because, like I said, this is, uh, this is marginal. Yeah. But we'll know at the end of the video what happened. We'll see you then. Okay, I'm back with you just to show you one other thing. Of note here, uh, I just did a meridian flip. Uh, now I'm on the other side of the meridian. And take a look at the guiding down here. To under 0 0.8, it has been has been as low as uh, 0.59 total RMS error, uh, which is, is pretty good. But if you remember uh, guiding earlier in the night, it was really really bad. Uh, my total RMS error was around 1.5. Now that was, it was enough to give me round stars with this uh, wide field scope, but this is a huge difference between guiding uh, from one side of the meridian to the other, and it's holding pretty steady. It held steady at really bad on the other, first side of the meridian, and it's holding pretty steady at uh, pretty good here on this side. Now it makes me wonder why that is. Uh, and you know what I came up with is, um, if you remember when I showed you my equipment setup, I had that uh, trailer hitch up on top with the weight hooked onto it to provide balance to the scope. And it makes me think that on one side of the meridian, the balance was not very good, and on the other side, the balance makes it a whole lot easier to guide. So it may not, may not be correct, but that's what I tend to think it is. The difference from the good guiding on one side, the bad guiding on the other side, I think is due to balance issues because of the way I had that trailer hitch and weight uh, tied up on to the top of the telescope.